Okay, so now let's say that we want to find the an equation. This is example one in this text. You want to find an equation of the tangent line of the tangent line to the per parabola. to the parabola y is equal to x squared at the point p which is 1 comma 1 if you enter 1 into this equation 1 squared is equal to 1 so what we what we what we actually want to do in this in this case is that basically if you go to some uh, decimals calculator for example you can see that y is equal to x squared y is equal to x squared is of course this graph over here right now the point one comma one is this point over here if i call this point essentially one comma one is this point over here right and we want to find the equation of the tangent line to the graph of this function at this point exactly meaning that um, meaning that essentially uh, basically meaning that basically you know that the equation of a line um, the equation of a line you could write it as for as a, the equation of a straight line you can write it as basically y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. So this line has the slope, has the slope m, and it goes through the point x1 comma y1, right? If you know essentially one point on the line, and if you know the slope of that line, you can write the equation of the line, right? So that means that since I know that the, the, that the point is 1 comma 1, this becomes the x1, y1, and the slope of the line, we can hopefully find it, right? Which means that this equation becomes y minus 1, because y over here is equal to 1, is equal to m times x minus 1, because x over here is equal to 1. So now if I enter this into this calculator, if I write basically y minus 1 is equal to m times m times basically x minus 1 I have a line over here it, it gives me a slider for m and if I change the slider you can see that the slope of this line of course changes right now since it has to be a tangent line it needs to have the exact slope of the slope of the exact slope of the of the of the graph of the function exactly at this point meaning that if i zoom in on this point you can see that the slope of the straight line so the, the, this this green line over here is that is the straight line which is the tangent line and this red line over here is the graph of the function right <coughs> you can see that <coughs> You can see that there is a bit of difference as far as the slope is concerned between the between the green line and the and the and the and the red line. So if I keep changing this a little bit, for example, something like this, you can see that at this point where m is equal to two, then if I keep zooming in, you can see absolutely no difference whatsoever between the graph of the function and the straight line meaning that uh, meaning that basically that 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 essentially uh, if you essentially zoom in on this point which means that essentially this distance over here is one thousandth of a unit for example if you take essentially if you zoom in essentially this much then uh, basically there is there is going to be no basically no no difference whatsoever between the graph that essentially the function itself and the straight line or essentially between what the, what the two are doing as far as the slopes are concerned whereas if i 
zoom out you can see that basically that at this point the straight line and the and the graph are doing exactly the same thing but then when you move essentially to the right or to the left then the function is doing something else and the line is still doing the same thing because it's a straight line the straight line keeps doing the same thing as far as the slope is concerned over and over again but the but the graph changes its behavior because of the fact that it's a curve it's not a straight line right so that means that the that means that the, the essentially the equation that you want to find is exactly uh, y minus 1 is equal to 2 times x minus 1 now of course this was through experiment we can of course calculate this as well but this is essentially the meaning of a tangent line meaning that assuming that this the value of m in this case is correct which is actually the case um, I will show you essentially in calculation in just a few moments when you zoom in on the graph of the function at this point you should see absolutely no difference between the behavior of the function and the tangent line meaning that as you can see the the, um, the graph of the function is right now is behind the tangent line meaning that it's not even possible to see the red line anymore the only thing that you can see is the green line if i hide this then you can see the, the red line otherwise it's not possible for you to see it at all right so that's essentially the meaning of a tangent line right now the way that we can calculate it the way that we can calculate essentially the slope of this green line over here or, or essentially this the value of m over here is basically using the same definition that we had before right meaning that we can basically say that over here we can say that basically that that that, that the slope of that line is going to be equal to um, you can imagine that you have the that that you have essentially the graph of the function is essentially some graph like this and this point for example over here is the point that we are looking at that we are looking at essentially one comma one and so uh, what i want to find is i want to find basically the slope of this line over here which is tangent to the graph of the function at this point so since i cannot calculate it directly what i'm going to do so i'm going to call this point a essentially right and if this point is a then you can say that basically that that that, that the coordinates of this point is a and f of a and so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to pick and i'm going to call this point p for example i'm going to take some point q over here and the coordinates of this point would be could be any x essentially right it could it could be any any point essentially on the in the domain of the function and since basically the the x coordinate of this of this point is x then the y coordinate would be f of x right and and of course i can draw a line between these two points which is essentially a secant line so now what i'm going to do and i'm going to call this point q for example so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to say that so if if we essentially make this x essentially get this x and and, and move it towards a meaning that a getting closer and closer to a then the point q will be getting closer and closer to p right and as that happens the slope of this secant line will be getting closer and closer to the slope of this tangent line which is what we are what, what we want to calculate right so that means that basically so how do i calculate the slope of this line over here the secant line it's essentially <coughs> The amount of rise that I have which is f of x and the, the height over here is f of a and that the amount of run is x minus a and I want basically I want essentially this x to approach a so I take the limit of this as x approaches a 
and that becomes basically the that becomes essentially the slope of the tangent line that becomes the slope of the tangent line that way we can calculate it <coughs> this you need to understand that it, it's it, this is essentially the basis of all calculus i mean all the calculus that you're ever going to learn is based on the the simple basically this simple situation over here and you need to understand it so now in this case basically my essentially this point this point over here is basically nothing but a and f of a right and x is well x and f of x are essentially you can take any x essentially any x would would essentially would work in this situation so then you can use the same the same definition you can say that m of tangent would be equal to the limit of basically f of x f of x minus f of a <coughs> over x minus a as x approaches a right now f of a in this case is equal to 1 and a is equal to 1 right so I can write this as the limit of basic the f of x which is in this case basically nothing but x squared because my function is f of x is equal to x squared so that would be x squared minus f of a is equal to 1 and x is the same thing as x and a is the same thing as 1 as x approaches a and a is equal to 1 right so this is how you can calculate the slope of that line and hopefully we have we have done extensive problems on limits when we were doing limits essentially um, and uh, so this you could write it as you could write this as the limit of basically x squared minus 1 squared over x minus 1 as x tends to 1 approaches 1 of course you cannot do direct substitution here because you would get 0 divided by 0 you cannot do that what you can do is that since you know that a squared minus b squared is equal to a minus b times times a plus b you can write this as and this is a squared minus b squared so you can write this as the limit of basic x minus 1 times basic x plus 1 over x minus 1 as x approaches 1 right and you can cancel these two out because x is not equal to 1 we are taking the limit of the function as x approaches 1 x is not exactly equal x never becomes exactly equal to 1 it gets close and close to 1 but it never basically it, it, the, the value never becomes exactly 1 so for the same reason you can can, you can cancel these two out and that would be the limit of basic the x plus 1 as x approaches 1 right which would be now you can do direct substitution 1 plus 1 is equal to 2 right so the slope of the line is equal to 2 which is what we saw on the calculator next you want to write this the, the equation of the line the slope uh, the point slope form this is called the point slope form the point slope form of, of of the line can be written as can be written as y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1 right now x1 y1 is in this case 1 1 comma 1 and m is equal to 2 as we calculated here so I can write y minus 1 is equal to 2 times x minus 1, which means that y minus 1 is equal to 2x minus 2, which means that y is equal to 2x negative 1 plus negative 2 plus 1 is equal to negative 1. So y is equal to 2x minus 2x minus 1, which is basically this graph over here, this y is equal to 2x minus 1 which is exactly this line over here tangent to the graph of the function at this 
point one comma one, right? So that's um, as you can see. Calculus is well very simple, right? It's it's really very simple, but uh, but well there is two things at least that, that you need to note the first thing is that if you don't understand the concepts it's not going to be any simple because if you don't understand it you're not going to be able to do it it's going to be something meaningless but then if you understand it it actually becomes something that is is it's even really fun to do And of course, well, it's 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 a very powerful tool, really. Moreover, uh, calculus essentially doing calculus takes time, takes a lot of time. It's not a simple thing that you can finish in one day or in two days or in two one two semesters. You have to work on it. It takes, I mean, if you want to be any good at calculus so that you can do something with it it's going to take you a couple of years at least you have to work on it and uh, so that it's like language that you speak if you don't if you don't practice enough you're not going to be fluent so but then Essentially, once you've done the work and once you've done your homework, then basically, then you have this very powerful tool using which you can do almost anything. So, but then again, uh, you have to be a little bit patient with it. I mean, if you're if you're if you're if you're in a rush, you're going to miss it. <laughs> okay so now another way of basically saying the same thing that we have said over here is basically the following so essentially you saw over here that you saw over here that basically that we had essentially this function over here I'll clean this up so that we can write something you have essentially this function over here you can call it f of x and um, Essentially, this point over here we call that point P. And let me take care of this camera. Okay, so this point over here we call that point P, and with coordinates f a and f of a. And this point here we call that Q with coordinates x and f of x. And we saw that basically that the the slope of this of of essentially of this line over here, the slope of this line can be calculated as f of x minus f of a over x minus a and when you take the limit of the same thing x as x approaches a that would be the slope of the the slope of this line right the slope of the tangent line right so we already did this and we understood it now in the same situation if you set basically um if you set x minus a, if you set it as uh, basically in in essentially this this distance over here is of course x minus a, right? Now in the same basically in the same expression, you can set basically x minus a, x minus a set it to h essentially, meaning that this would be essentially this distance you call it h right now then if essentially if x minus a essentially is equal to h then you can say that x is equal to h minus a right uh, essentially h plus a or or you can call it essentially a plus h usually we, we write it as a plus h right and so x essentially a remains the same x becomes essentially a plus h x and a remains the same and then as as basically as x approaches a as you can see as x approaches a h is basically approaching zero h approaches zero because this distance is getting smaller and smaller so this this essentially h over here approaches zero right 
and the same basic the expression over here you can write it m of 10 is equal to uh, basically the limit of then instead of x you, you can write basically a plus h f of a plus h minus uh, basically f of a um, and x is the same thing as again a plus h is the same thing as a plus h minus a as h approaches zero right and so a and a you can cancel out of course to cancel the two out you would have basically this is the same thing as the limit of basically f of a plus h minus f of a over h as h approaches zero so this is another way of saying the same thing another way of another way of saying the same thing would be the limit of f of a plus h minus f of a over h as h approaches zero right so um so as a result now if you wanted to find essentially if you, if you wanted to use essentially this definition in uh, another problem we could basically do it in the following way for example let's say that you have uh, a function for example this is example number two this is example number two you have a function y is equal to three over x and you want to find you want to find basically an equation you want to find an equation of the tangent of the tangent to the to the function to the graph of the function graph of the function the function being this function at the point at 3 comma 1 so 3 over 3 is equal to 1 so 3 comma 1 right so then essentially if I say that basically if I say that the um, that the m of tan would be equal to essentially the the, the, the slope of the tangent line at this point um, would be the same thing as the limit of basic the f of a plus h minus f of a over over basic the over h as h approaches zero right now in this case the value of a is equal to three and a plus h would be basic the three plus h right and f of a plus h would be f of a plus h would be f of basically 3 plus h which would be essentially 3 over 3 plus h which would be 3 over 3 plus h right so then you can write this as you can write this as the limit as h approaches 0 of f of a plus h which is 3 over 3 plus h minus f of a and f of a is equal to 1 right minus 1 over h as h approaches 0 so you can write you can basically take this limit meaning that you can write this as the limit of take essentially lcm over shear 3 plus h and that's a 3 minus uh, 3 minus h and these two you can cancel out over h as h approaches zero so you can write this as the limit of this divided by this would be essentially this times the reciprocal of this so that would be negative h over basically 3 plus h times the reciprocal of this which is 1 over h and you can as h approaches zero you can cancel these two out as h is not equal to zero right so this limit essentially becomes the limit of negative 1 over 3 plus h as h approaches 0. As h approaches 0, the value of this becomes negative 1 thirds, right? So that means that the slope of the line is negative 1 thirds. 
Therefore, m is equal to negative one thirds. Now, the point that we are looking at is basically three comma one. Three comma one. So then, if you want to write the equation of the line, that would be y minus y one is equal to m times x minus x one. So y minus y one would be equal to one is equal to negative one thirds times x minus x1 which is equal to 3 then you can multiply everything by a factor of 3 you would have basically 3 times for example y minus 1 is equal to negative 1 times basically x minus 3 which is 3y 3y minus 3 is equal to 3 minus x and 3y is equal to negative x and 3 plus 3 is equal to 6 and then you can divide or you can divide everything by 3 meaning that you could you could write y is equal to negative 1 thirds times x 6 thirds is equal to 2 right so this is the this this is the equation of the line which means that then if you graph the function the function was 3 over x the function was y is equal to y is equal to 3 over x at the point 3 comma 1 at the point at the point 3 comma 1 at this point and if I do the if I graph the equation that we found was y is equal to negative 1 thirds times x plus 2 which gives us essentially this line which is tangent to the graph of the function at this point and you can see again that as I zoom in on this part of the function can see that as I zoom in and I, this is 100 essentially 500th of a unit and as I zoom in you can see that now when essentially when this distance on the x-axis is uh, 100th of a unit you cannot see any difference whatsoever between the tangent line and the function itself and you can keep going and and now you cannot even see the graph of the function anymore. You can see only the, the tangent line, right? So that's essentially this is the this is the, the, the tangent line, this is the graph of the function. Absolutely complete essentially the same the same things, right? So um, that's basically the that's essentially what the, what what this essentially means is that when you find meaning that essentially meaning that essentially slope wise at this exact point whatever the function is doing the exact same thing the tangent is doing right and when we say slope wise that means we are talking about the rate of change meaning that the rate of change of the straight line at this point is exactly the same as the rate of change of the function exactly at this point which means that we are talking about instantaneous rate of change meaning that we are not talking about uh, average rate of change anymore meaning that we are talking strictly about one point and that's basically the um, the magic of the limit that is the ma that, that is exactly the magic of the limit meaning that um, for many years for two, not for many years for 2000 years there were all of these uh, Zeno's paradoxes and, and these paradoxes people could not solve them um, meaning that people could essentially see that for example an arrow was moving when you put when you when you shoot an arrow in a in a in a in a, an arrow and a bow when you shoot the, the 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 arrow you can see that the arrow is moving 
But one of the Zeno's paradoxes, when you think, when you, when you essentially, when you think about it in one way, that paradox essentially means that the arrow uh, in logic is not moving, but in the real world, the, the same arrow is moving. Okay, and that essentially is the problem of um, essentially dividing zero by zero, which was essentially known as the Zeno's paradox, one of the paradoxes of Zeno which was which people could not solve for for about 2000 years until about 400 years ago basically calculus could solve the problem and now essentially in reality the arrow is moving in mathematics the same arrow in mathematics and in physics and in logic the same arrow is moving as well so that now we can uh, explain it logically and we can calculate it it, and we can calculate the motion essentially so that's all about basically that now in the next section um, we will talk a little bit about velocity and some some a couple of concepts about derivative and that sort of thing and that's almost all about it there is not much that's there is not much to talk about in this section. So I'll see you in the next video and thank you.